The Haybike Ranger S is a foldable 20 by 4 inch fat tire e-bike that's brimming with features. It has front and rear turn signals which are also visible from the sides, a highly customizable yet minimalist display that also shows your bike's voltage and other information, along with a very aesthetically pleasing frame design, top-notch, almost automotive-like quality paint job, and solid mag wheels. This bike is guaranteed to make your friends jealous and turn heads as you ride by. The Haybike Ranger S takes everything that the best e-bikes have and gives you even more. Today we are going to look at all of those features and then take it out on the road through our usual test course. Alright, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh my god, beautiful complete stop ladies and gentlemen, looking both ways. Here we go, nice safe soft acceleration, no jerky movements, crisp clean steering. Precision, professional e-bike riding over here. Let's jump right in. At the top, we've got nice feeling faux leather grips, and these grips are locking from both sides. And down here, we've got a couple of controls. You can use this switch to turn the lights on or off. And of course, you do have turn signals on this bike, which are a very nice feature. Horn button at the bottom. And here's the display, a very simple and minimalist design. I do really like that they show you the voltage of your battery. Thank you, Haybike, for doing that. This is a very accurate way to tell how much power you have left in your battery versus a battery bar. And when you press the power button, you can also cycle what you see on the display. So right here we show motor wattage, the distance for your current trip in miles, and your odometer five levels of pedal assist, seven speed Shimano shifter, thumb throttle on the right. And guys, underneath the throttle, we have an auto switch for automatic headlights. Pretty cool. And here are the RSX branded hydraulic disc brake levers. This bike does come with a foldable stem for compact storage. And look at this cable management. This is a nice sleeve that they put around the front. It makes the front of this bike look very neat and tidy. And I do see four mounting holes for mounting more accessories like a front storage rack or something else. And what's interesting is that this headlight button, all it does is it turns the backlight of the screen on and off. So if you hold this on, it'll turn on. If you hold it again, it'll turn off. So it's a headlight symbol, but if I try and turn the headlights on, the headlight still works. So this button right here is for your screen backlight. And the Haybike logo on this bike is always illuminated, which does look kind of cool. The headlight will turn on right over it. Let's turn that off and look at those turn signals right here. Look at that. Very bright and visible front turn signals, which you can also see from the side. And that is an excellent feature. The front forks do come with a preload adjustment and a lockout adjustment plastic fenders, which I do like more than metal fenders because these do not make noise and they work just the same as metal fenders. And here we have the 4x20 inch knobby tires. Very nice looking mag wheels. I always love how mag wheels look. I think they look fantastic. And if you see here, we have our 180 millimeter disc brake rotors with the RSX branded hydraulic disc brake calipers. Keyhole to remove the battery. And there's your Hay Bike logo. I do really like the paint job on this bike. If you guys can see, it does have a nice kind of like a medium tint blue paint job in there with some flakes in there to really spice up the paint job. Nice job, Hay Bike, on the paint job. Very impressive. Charging port on this side. There's your folding mechanism for the bike. Guys, here's the charger that you get with this bike. Nice Hay Bike logo right on it. And look at this. 4 amp charger. That's double than what you usually get for these 48 volt e-bikes. Nice job, Haybike, in providing a faster charger. 
charge port over here and this battery is removable you go ahead and use the provided key unlatch it pops right out and you can take this out in order to put the battery back in throw it back in there turn the key to the left pop it back in locks the battery in place and you're good to go and to use this bike you do have to make sure the battery is turned on and the battery will constantly stay on and it'll give the bike a little bit of power because if you notice that display, it always has that off notification on it. So if you do want to truly turn the bike completely off, you either remove the battery or turn the battery off like so. So guys, if you see the bike is clearly off because it says off, I can still turn on the headlights and I can turn on the turn signal. So once again, if you do want to turn the bike off completely, go ahead and flip that red switch on the battery. And on this side, it does say Class 2 e-bike. It's got some specifications for this bike, top speed, power rating, etc. And for whatever reason, they do give you extra stickers like this, just in case this one falls off or wears off. The pedals do fold up. You just push this in, fold it up, and then if you pull, it'll unfold. Kickstand in the back. This bike does come with a very nice, wide, squishy seat. We will see how comfortable this is. Rear rack in the back for additional storage. There's that RSX branded rear brake caliper with another 180 millimeter rotor in the back. So this bike should have some really good stopping power. The motor mounted in the center of the mag wheel is a 750 watt rated motor, which does peak at 1200 watts. We're gonna test the performance of this motor in a second. There's that seven speed transmission in the back. And we also get a Shimano Turney derailleur and a derailleur guard just in case your bike falls down, the derailleur won't get damaged. And the back of the bike does also have a light with a logo that does light up. Once again, the turn signals on this bike are fantastic. And just like in the front, they do wrap around to the side, which is very important for visibility and safety because sometimes a car might be offset it's not directly behind you and it's good to be able to see the side of the blinker as well nice job hay bike on this feature guys one more thing i want to show you about this rear light if you hit the brake it blinks it doesn't just light up it blinks and that will help a lot if you're on the road to get a car's attention this is going to help a lot Something that I do appreciate about this bike is that it does accommodate shorter riders. As you can see, the seat does go down very low. On the website, this bike claims to be good for riders 4, 11, and up. All right, guys, so let me show you how to get into the advanced settings of this bike. So obviously you turn the bike on first, all right, and then you hold down the plus and minus buttons, and it should say U03. U04 is just Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then the next one is to reset your odometer. P01 is gonna be your backlight brightness. I like to keep that at two. P02 is just display units, either miles an hour or kilometers an hour. And P04 is how many minutes until your bike turns off if you're not using it. Now this is cool. You can actually change how many pedal assist levels you have. You can either do one through three or one through five. I personally like doing one through three. I don't need so many increments, so it's up to you guys, but this is what I mean by having a customizable display. I really like that you can change how many pedal assist levels you can have. P06 is your wheel diameter. Now P08 is where you change your top speed. So right now I set it to 63, and whatever that means, that's as high as that goes. That's going to unlock the most speed possible from this bike. P12 is your assist strength, and so I just set that to uh, as high as it can go, which is three. As for the rest of the settings, don't mess with them. You're gonna mess up your bike. I wouldn't mess with them unless you really knew what you were doing. Really the most important thing you need to worry about is P08 to unlock the top speed, and P05 to adjust how many pedal assist levels you want. All right, guys, and looking at the Hay Bike website for the Ranger S, you're started off with a little bit of customer support. Over here, a chat box, let's close that out. So, this bike does come in a Merlot red. You guys saw the blue, the sand color, and the shark gray. As you can see, again, the bike is folding, very small. You can get a bunch of accessories from Hay Bikes website. Look at that, look at all the storage that you can get. Nice bags on the side, those are some nice looking bags. 
Wow. All right, moving on. So it looks like the battery is TUV safety certified, which is very, very similar to a UL certification. It's just a private company that certifies lots of different types of equipment, batteries included. Look at that. So for free, you can get an extra one year warranty. Again, you got all those accessories if you need it. Yeah, so the advertised top speed is 28 miles an hour. We didn't quite get there. We were close, maybe like 26, 27. I'm sure you can get there in warmer temperatures. Max payload, 400 pounds. That's quite a bit. Four amp charger, that's a fantastic charger. That will charge up the 48 volt battery very quick. Yeah, see here they advertise the advantages of a four amp charger. You get to charge your battery much faster. Your range will always be determined by a lot of factors. Looks like this is marketed as an RV friendly option. So it's foldable and you can easily store it in small spaces. Again, all the nice color choices. Man, they did a fantastic job on the colors in this bike. And it looks like there's an app that you can get for Hay Bike as well, which uh, tells you a little bit about your distance, where you traveled, your calories burned, etc. And if you guys do need help assembling the bike, looks like they have an easily accessible instructional video over here on how to assemble the bike. So that is fantastic. It's a lot more fun just to watch someone assemble a bike on a video versus reading about it in some manual. Let's quickly run over to the specifications and feel free to pause it at this point. So this bike is made for riders between 411 and 63. Here's all the geometry numbers over here. Again, guys, feel free to pause it if you guys want to take a look. So those are the features and specs of the Hay Bike Ranger S. Now let's take it out on the road and put it through our usual test course. Decide to go on a little bike ride. Okay, well, have fun. We will. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are on the Hay Bike Ranger S A foldable step through style 20 by 4 inch fat tire e-bike we're about to do the main hill climb test we're on a full 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 charge it's a 48 volt system the display is reading 54.1 volts i did already unlock this bike's top speed so we're at a fresh charge this is my first ride on this bike and today we're going to do a little bit of a range test maybe we'll get I don't know, between 10 to 20 miles. Let's see how the battery does, how the motor does, and how it does through the gauntlet, through my test circuit. Obviously, starting off with the moderate hill climb test that I bring all my bikes through. Without further ado, throttle only. Three, two, one, boom. Nice easy start from the line. I do hear that motor working. Voltage dip is going into the 49 volt range we were at 55 so about a 5 volt voltage dip all right we're getting there guys we got some torque here we go and by the way guys if you like videos like this subscribe to the channel if you like the video like it if you don't like it let me know why in the comments tell me why you're mad tell me what your problem is and that's time we're finishing up right at about 20 miles an hour just a little bit under 20 miles an hour we're gonna keep on going guys we'll keep cruising next up we're gonna see what the downhill speed is like let's get this thing all the way up let's pedal get up to speed i did unlock this bike i brought the top speed all the way up the free wheel i believe spins at 32 miles an hour according to its own speedometer and it looks like the speedometer is pretty accurate not too bad, all right, so downhill speed, 31 miles an hour. Get into the max RPM rating of the motor for the voltage that it's getting. And we're gonna go ahead and take a little shortcut right here. Seems to be quite a bit of traffic on this road today, so we're just gonna hang out on the sidewalk. I don't even know what is going on right here. I have no idea, guys. All right, we're gonna cross the road. I gotta cross the road. It's traffic. Oh, high traffic day. Guys, this is actually my second review ride out today. I've been waiting for a day with decent weather and today this is the best we're gonna get. We got 40 degrees, maybe 39 degrees and cloudy. Yesterday was rain all day. Tomorrow, rain slash snow. Before that, crazy cold. Before that, more rain. 
It's terrible. I just want to get out here and ride, you know what I mean? To feed my addiction, I mean my hobby. All right, hear that motor? Sounds like it's pretty torquey. Let's see how it does on the steep hill climb test. Yeah, speedometer looks pretty good. Decently accurate. All right, we'll start from this line. Here we go. Throttle only. 48 volts, baby. Let's go. Let's see what you got. If it can do it, it'll give me at least eight miles an hour. Uh-oh. Nah, I can't do it. We got a pedal. That's too bad. What are you going to do, guys? Doing my best. So the motor power isn't the greatest for a 48-volt system. But, guys, you don't buy bikes like this for power. You buy it for other features. This motor does have a significant amount of noise for a geared hub motor. Hydraulic brakes working great. And speaking of the brakes, let's see how they do from a 20 mile an hour speed. Let's get the speed and boom. The back locks up and it started to give out on me. Started to go sideways. Let's do that again. Let's get up to 20 and here we go. Yeah, the back does start to slide sideways, but the brakes work. They work just fine. A lot of people walking out and about. That's good. Got to get active. Stretch the legs while you guys have good weather. It has been terrible weather over here, folks. This is the second bike of three that are sitting in my house that I have to review. And I have another one that I'm getting today. A very special one you guys will see later. Ghost pedaling is pretty significant. Right now, I'm getting a little bit of pedal feel at 27, 28, but that's about it. So forget about pedaling after 30. But again, this is not a high speed bike. You do not buy bikes like this for speed and power. If you do ever want to modify that, it's fairly easy to change. I've done it on a bunch of bikes, buying a bigger chain ring, adding a couple chain links. Not too bad, fairly simple thing to do if you want to bring it to a bike shop. If you do want to pedal a little bit faster. But it seems like the gearing is perfect for this style of bike. I do appreciate the fat tires that do help with the bumps. Always wonderful. Feels like you're riding on a cloud. These tires are aired up to 20 PSI. And just for your reference, I am 200 pounds, 5'10". And we're off. Just did a little bit of filming over here and took some pictures of this bike. Off-roading, as usual, with fat tires. Not too bad. Going up hills for this bike, pretty good. The smaller wheels do offer you more torque than bigger wheels, so that is good. Actually, forgot to put on my mirror and my light. Let's go ahead and do that. So for my reviews, I use this little El Cheapo strap-on mirror. There you go. And that way I don't have to make any kind of holes in here because some handlebars, you have to make a hole to put in a bar. Oh, look at that. Just flies off. You got to make sure this thing is solid. Good thing that happened now and not while I was moving. There we go. All right, please do not pop off. I think that'll be fine. And then we also have this little light that I put on here. Just a simple blinking light to help people see me just in case this light is not enough I think this helps a little bit so your boy is still around and not in the hospital bed getting hit by cars oh come on this is a, such a pain come on harder with gloves there we go so now we have a little blinking light and we are ready to roll links to all this stuff in the description below Except for the clip-on mirror. I don't want you guys to even buy that. That's just something for my reviews. I'd recommend something more permanent. If you guys have just a singular bike that you use, get a better mirror than this. And we're off. 
So as usual, today we'll do a little bit of a range test, 10 to 20 miles. We'll see what the battery voltage is at the end. After letting the battery rest for maybe half an hour, we'll put a multimeter to it and that'll give you guys an idea of what kind of range you'll get with this bike. And just by the looks of it now, it looks, oh, squirrel. It looks like I'm gonna be using throttle anytime I'm going after 25, because to get any kind of resistance at that higher speed, you do have to pedal pretty quick. And I don't wanna feel like I'm in a hamster wheel. So if we're going fast, we're just gonna throttle. More than likely, that's probably what you're gonna do as well. Unless you are a, I don't know, I'm not gonna call you a slow poke, but unless you're slower than me, I guess, I guess you'd be a normal person because I'm a speed demon. Unless you're a normal person, a normal sane human individual, you'd probably be okay. Now we are gonna do a zero to 20 test with this bike. Although I'm pretty sure you guys don't really care because again, you don't get this kind of bike for speed and power. Nobody cares about the zero to 60 for a Honda Civic or a Toyota Prius or something like that. You don't get those cars for performance. Well, let's mosey on over to our testing site for top speed in zero to 20. Top speed in this bike, I'm gonna guess is just gonna be probably around 28 miles an hour, even though I did unlock the speed in the settings. Uh, I don't know if that did anything. The free wheel spins up to about 32 according to its own speedometer. And once you factor in rolling resistance, wind, and me sitting on it, my guess is this probably be pretty much a 28 mile an hour bike, which for most people is plenty fast. But I know you guys wanna see the test and I'm gonna deliver, I'm gonna give you the results. So here we go, let's get set up. Come to a complete stop. All right guys, here we go, three, two, one, boom. Very easy start. 10. Twenty. Let's dip down a little bit. Oh yeah, alright, we're at 25. Here we go. Speed demon over here. 26. Can we get 27? 20. Uh, 26.7 Come on baby, come on I don't know, I'm not getting anything more out of this bike We're not gonna keep going Let's go ahead and turn around Let's do that again Here we go Get up to speed. Let's go fast and see if we can maintain it. All right, we're at 26 again. Almost 27, guys. Almost. Twenty-six. All right, so right now we got 26 miles an hour. I don't know if this bike is rated for 28 on the website, but that's what we got today. All right, so now we're gonna test the off-roading capabilities. This grassy area has some roots, some bumps, obviously some grass. The front shock has a decent amount of travel. There is no rear suspension, but the seat is decently cushy. I wanna say the seat has some Springs in it also. Let me just double check that for you guys. Yeah, see it's got some springs in it, so oh almost fell. So that will help a little bit. There we go. Off-roading baby. Let's go. Let's go. The front fork is a little bit clunky, but that's okay, guys. This is a budget front fork. That's what you're gonna get. It works. It'll do the job. Here we go under the wrench. See, if I ever get hit in the head, it's no big deal. I got a nice full face helmet. I can even get hit in the face and it's no big deal. Full face helmet, guys. Really helps in the winter time, keeping things warm. Looks a little bit ridiculous, especially when I'm riding a slow bike. Like, why does this guy need a motorcycle helmet? 
See all this pile of snow we gotta go through? Mud, oh yeah, hell yeah. Got some quarters. Big bump right here. Not too bad, guys. This bike is decently capable. Let's do this part right here. I bring most of my review bikes through this course. This bike is handling it pretty good. Like most 20 by 4 inch wheeled front suspension bikes. Although I do wish I had some of those quads that those guys had. Yeah, pretty good power. I think they tune the bike down for acceleration, so it gives you a soft acceleration. It's not going to give you a crazy amount of power. Ranch right here. Boom. Just going right over it. Easy. Why don't we turn the gears down? Make sure I don't slip on the leaves. Going down. All right. Easy. No problem. Oh, it smells like Chinese food over here. My favorite Chinese food restaurant in my town is over here. Man, maybe I'll get some of that later. I didn't consent to smelling that. Excuse me. I'm gonna have to speak to your manager. It is kind of annoying. Let's say you're trying to lose weight, you're on a diet, whatever, and then you smell something so delicious. And you're like, really, man? You really gonna do this to me? Killing me, Smalls. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh my God, beautiful, complete stop, ladies and gentlemen. Looking both ways. Here we go, nice, safe, soft acceleration. No jerky movements. Crisp, clean steering. Precision, professional e-bike riding over here. I know you commenters down there, you love safety. At least some of you. Some of you guys don't care. Some of you are like, all right, yeah, you're going 40 and a 25, awesome. No, officer, my speedometer is miscalibrated. I was actually going 25. Here we are. Complete stop. Wow. I feel fulfilled. All right, let's go ahead and check out the pedal assist. You know what? We're going to go ahead and remove my phone because we know the speedometer is decently accurate because I can't reach the controls. I could have put it here, but then it'll be in the way of the shifter. These handlebars are on the narrower side, but that's okay. This is a folding bike. And so guys, this is a mostly flat neighborhood. So good place to test out the pedal assist levels and the power level. So let's bring it to pedal assist one. See what it's like. So first let's test the throttle. All right, so the throttle is linked with the pedal assist level. So level one gives me seven miles an hour. And I'm going to guess that pedaling is the same. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to test the pedals. Essentially, the pedaling, essentially, you'll just keep pedaling until a specific speed limit, and then it'll cut you off. So level one, seven miles an hour. Level two, see what we got. 12 miles an hour. 13, okay. Level three, all right. 15. Hey, buddy. Lots of doggies out. Level four. See what we got, level four. About 19 miles an hour. And then obviously five will give you full speed, unrestricted speed. Steering feels nimble on this bike as usual for smaller wheels. Gives you a little bit more agility. Smaller lightweight bike, lightweight steering. Pretty good if you need something maneuverable. Maybe you're in a city commuting. Maybe you have to do a little bit of lane splitting in slow traffic like New York City or something like that. This will be a great bike for that. So far, the seat feels decently comfortable. Not too bad, but I know you guys are going to replace the seat anyways. But the stock seat is okay. It is on the wider side. It is kind of squishy. So thankfully, Hay Bike did a good job in understanding what kind of people are going to ride this bike. They're not going to get something that's small for aggressive riding. You're just going to chill and cruise. And this bike does also have an adjustable stem where you can lift it up vertically a little bit higher. Let's see what that's like. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, ladies and gentlemen, we are chilling. We are cruising. I feel like these are ape hangers or something. Kind of feel ridiculous and amazing at the same time. <laughs> feel like if I pull back, I can wheelie on this bike. I kind of like this. But this gives you a really upright riding position. It'll shift even more weight onto the seat. It looks kind of cool. One downside about having this uh, thumb throttle on the right side is that you have to take your thumb off of the throttle if you want to shift because obviously if you're shifting with your right thumb and you're using your thumb for throttle, it's either one or the other. I feel like if you have a twist throttle, it's good to keep on the right. If you have a thumb throttle, it's good to keep on the left. Just my opinion. Man, I am really liking this uh, riser bar. This is great. Horn. Kind of sounds like a little uh, buzzing noise. This bike, by the way, does have turn signals. I just keep forgetting to use them. Um, you can kind of see them when they're on. So for example, if I'm stopped right here, you can kind of see them from the side. So that is nice. Hey bike did a good job in making the turn signals visible from the side. Um, I wish they did light up on the actual handlebars when they're on because I can't see this side. And sometimes what happens with these turn signals is that you turn it on and you forget that it's on and then you're just riding around with a turn signal on, confusing everyone. Like some of those people on the highway, you're driving by them, they have their turn signal on, and they're just like, man, are you gonna turn or what? Are you gonna switch lanes or what are you gonna do? And they just forgot. Maybe they have their music blasting and they can't hear it and they're just oblivious. So you're gonna be one of those people except on an e-bike. It would be nice if at some point someone released something where these were lit up when they're on. Just my opinion. But if you are diligent in using them, they are there for you. And I think they are fantastic turn signals. Nice and bright and visible and visible from the sides too. Very important. Brakes feel fantastic on this bike. No surprise there. Hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. Stopping power feels excellent. You know what I want to do? I want to bring this riser bar, this riser stem, all the way up. Just because I want to be ridiculous. How far will it go? All right, that's as far as the cable will let me go. So I had it up to, up high. I had it pretty up high already. All right, that's as far as it goes, guys. Brakes are fantastic. Yeah, I could just zip around this little neighborhood all day. Let's take the speed bump on. Nothing like butter. The fat tires plus the front cushy shocks help absorb everything. Fantastic shock absorption. Let's do that again, even faster. Not too bad, not too bad. Front shock works great. All right, so let's go ahead and check the distance on the phone. The distance on the display says 5.9 miles. We'll just say six miles. And this says 8.35 miles. I don't know how that's accurate. Okay, maybe this is inaccurate. I don't know. Oh, well, we'll go ahead and put the phone back in since we're done talking about the pedal assist and I don't need to access the controls anymore. One eternity later. All right, guys, so my GPS says that I have gone 10 miles. The display says I've gone 7.7 .7 miles. I don't know why there is a big difference considering the considering the speedometer is relatively the same. But the voltage is getting lower and lower. We're at 40, 47.2 volts and it's showing two bars on the screen. So I don't want to get stuck. I don't know why it's at two bars. And it's not two out of four. It's like two out of what, six? Oh, now it's at four bars, 40 set. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but um, guys, we are gonna head back. So maybe we'll get like a 15 mile ride today. 
and we'll see what the voltage is afterwards after letting the battery rest but we're gonna head on back because it is also getting dark unfortunately we are still in the middle of winter and right around like three something it is kind of on the darker side and we're almost at three and I don't like riding around in the dark especially when it's cold so the throttle does feel pretty good still even with lower battery levels still still feels like it has some get up some bikes they really lose a lot of power at lower battery levels and so far this one's okay under throttle we have like 43 44 volts oh there's the guy that was on his quad earlier now he's back and so far i've been out riding for maybe i don't know between one to two hours and the seat is still decently comfortable like i said this is a wider seat so comfort levels will be a little bit more than they usually are for some of the standard narrower and harder seats i am so used to these high handlebars now i just love it i know when i go back to any other bike they're going to be lower than this and i won't like it i just i really like it i don't know why it just feels cool it feels comfy all right so here's where you need power guys you're crossing a busy road we got to get to the other side busy road over here got lots of traffic here we go not bad let's go up this curb oh man that front shock feels fantastic and this is another bike that you won't really be hassled if you're riding no one's gonna look at you and be like oh you've got something that pretty much looks like a motorcycle it's a step through bicycle yeah it has fatter tires but it still looks like a bicycle so you won't be bothered by people who are like oh what is that what are you riding what kind of crazy thing is that let's go up this curb boom easy downhill we go handles off road just fine top speed now that we are at a lower battery level what 24 miles an hour and again i would pedal but like i said earlier pedaling at high speeds with this chain ring there's a good amount of ghost pedaling going on unless you move your legs really fast which i do not want to do yeah i could definitely feel like it's getting colder and colder and by the way guys you will have better range and slightly 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 more power during warmer conditions because batteries don't like the cold it doesn't damage the battery when you use it in the cold unless it's like crazy cold like negative two degrees or something like that then past once you start getting into the negatives then i think it's not all that great for the battery but discharging batteries in the cold is fine you're not going to damage them but they don't perform as well they have a little bit less voltage a little bit less capacity on the charging side of things you should never ever ever charge your batteries below 32 degrees fahrenheit that will damage the battery so if you guys are in a cold environment and you get your e-bike and it's been sitting outside maybe you just got it shipped in do not immediately throw it on the charger let that battery warm up all right so see this i'm throttling and it's showing me one bar 45 volts it's getting darker and darker i don't mind waiting at the light it's kind of a nice break see as i'm sitting here the battery bars are recovering now we're at three bars so that voltage drop is something three bars can i get four i don't know probably not 46 volts you know there's a uh, pretty substantial divot or bump that we're coming up on we'll see how this bike performs we're gonna fly through it there it is yeah there's a chunk of sidewalk that's missing let's see what happens ready 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 not bad not bad the front handle it like a champ the back obviously there's no shocks but the seat has some suspension in it and it is squishy so that will help so this bike is decently comfortable when it comes to shock absorption even though it is a hardtail man these guys gotta trim their bushes jesus see i'm pedaling just fine right now 20 miles an hour feels pretty comfortable drop off the curb easy 
Nice and maneuverable, small wheels. Helps a lot with the tighter turns. This little turn. I know you guys hate me for sidewalk riding, but sometimes you gotta do it. If it's a busy road, safety first, and uh, there's never anyone walking on this sidewalk. It's not like a city. I live in the suburbs. Yeah, tight turns like this, turning around, easy. Once again, waiting for traffic. One eternity later. And we're off. Coming up is gonna be a little bit of a low voltage hill climb. It is a hill, and we are on a lower battery, guys. I'm showing 13 miles on my GPS. This thing is showing about 11. The voltage is dipping down to 41.5 volts during acceleration. And we'll see how it does. Hopefully it doesn't turn off. Uh, I don't know, the battery bar, there's one bar left. Pick up some speed. So right now I want to shift down. Thankfully pedal assist is there. Dipping down to 41 volts. All right, we made it up that hill. Let's continue on. I'm just gonna use pedal assist. Nah, but I like the throttle for flat parts. When I don't want to pedal, it's nice to have the throttle. I think every e-bike should come with throttle. Just my opinion. I mean, the cadence sensor is pretty much a throttle. Why not just put it on the handlebar? Put a little button. I am really curious about what the battery level actually is. Because it's showing one bar. And I don't know if that's because we're using the battery or because of voltage sag or what. So we'll get back. We'll throw this thing on the multimeter and we'll see what it's at. We'll let it rest for about a half hour. Let that voltage recover. Let the battery chill out for a bit. See, now we're at two bars. 44 volts. And this part is bumpy. In my town, apparently, this is a sidewalk. It's like the surface of the moon. Oh. To make this ride feel comfortable, you need some high travel dual suspension. But so far, this is okay. It's not bad. This is a really good test for bumps, though. That's for sure. I feel like my town is the best for testing e-bikes. I have it, everything. I got the worst sidewalks, but I have some low traffic roads also. Got some uh, dirt and grassy areas I can go through also. But look at this, guys. If you want a good sidewalk test, come to my town. You'll get it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the final thoughts on the Haybike Ranger S. I love it. I think it's great. I love the look of it. The paint job is spectacular. I really like these riser handlebars. I'm just enjoying myself, just chilling. I feel like I'm on ape hangers. Nice feeling handlebars, thumb throttle. I wish it was on the left side, but what are you gonna do? I like the turn signals. I like the aesthetic. The lights look great. The logos and the lights look great. The front shocks work fantastic. The big tires soak up all the bumps. Suspension in the seat and the cushy seat Makes the seat pretty good. So far, my butt is very comfortable in this seat. The pedaling is perfect. The gearing is perfect for the amount of power that this bike gives you, which is a decent amount. Enough for a sane human being. Brakes work fantastic. Nice hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. A lot of these smaller bikes get 160 millimeter rotors, and this comes with 180, so that'll give you increased leverage on the wheels when you when your calipers clamp down on the discs, they have more leverage to stop the wheels. Foldable bike, so very compact. Can't exactly tell you the range just yet because I don't know it yet, but I will throw it up on the screen. I will show you guys what the ending voltage is after this ride, which looks like we're gonna get about 15 miles. According to my GPS, according to this, it says 12 miles. So I really like this bike. I think it's a great bike. If you guys wanna check it out, Use the link in the description below. 
And if you guys want to subscribe to this channel, feel free. If I've earned your subscription, like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, tell me why in the comments. Until next time.